I just want to give a heads up that uh, maybe I'm a little over prepared for this session. So if you guys want to latch on to your seat belts and uh, uh, you know, I'm a little too over prepared, but I can make mistakes. So, uh, but yeah, we can start. So hello everyone. So here's the story of the process of becoming an art, an art called Sochalaya. My creativity as a kid was inspired by my grandmother's stories about her own childhood, mythology, and Tenali Raman. That's my party. She always carries a radiant smile. As I grew into a teenager, my art was vague. At this time, emotions were running high, and my escape was writing. I practiced journaling without punctuation and space. This made it complex for me to go back and read it. But what had to stay with me stayed with me. As I kept at it, all the words that were cramped up started getting sculpted into a form. So it almost did not matter what I was writing, because the flow of thoughts became more important, and what was to emerge was always a surprise. It was joyful to witness how my emotions could culminate into a form, just like settling a heap of sand. During the lectures, I would automatically start doodling and scribbling. It was my unique way to give shapes and patterns to what was being taught like a coded set of notes, less of mugging up and more of shape association work. This automatically made listening more fun. To this day, you will find me sketching while someone is talking to me. By the time I joined architecture course, drawing took a deeper plunge. It allowed me to look at things at a macro and micro level. I was always inquisitive and insisted on diving deep into details. I enjoyed the idea of investigating buildings and recreating them on paper over and over again. During the course, we co-created a movement called Kale. The idea was, if street children cannot go to school, then let's take the school to them. We designed and built a cycle cart and filled it with toys, and we played games for practical education so that the kids could reap some benefits out of it for their survival. Feeling a need to comprehend natural building, a topic least spoken during my coursework, I chose to intern with bioarchitect Eugene Pandala in Kerala. He told me about his motorcycle journeys with Arundhati Roy and Gerard Dikuna. His expertise inspired me to explore traditional architecture across India in all possible directions for the next eight months, all by road. Inspired by my grandmother's nostalgic tales of her village and my personal journey, my final year dissertation proposed a school of redesign. The aim was twofold. Firstly, all designs are inspired from various sources. Secondly, Architecture is best learned through integrating multiple design aspects and hands-on experiences. After my formal education, I was chosen for a program in Brazil called Warriors Without Weapons. I relied upon my art to raise funds and offered a personally painted art to any individual who supported my cause. This was a big boost for my confidence as a fresh graduate who was going to step into foreign soil for the first time. The Warriors Without Weapons program taught me community participatory methods turning dreams into reality. Working in favelas, we identified residents' aspirations, unearthed hidden talents, and mobilized resources from around for them to actualize their dreams. I transformed and evolved through this work. After the program, I dedicated six months to furthering my understanding of natural building practices, hopping from one eco-village to another. I had the privilege of meeting architect Johan van Langen, the father of bioarchitecture in South America, who initiated me into the intuitive world of architecture and the building techniques of the natives from Amazon forest. Building on my experiences in Brazil, I roamed as a nomad in Turkey for three years. There, I co-founded an architectural nomad community called Obaruhu. We moved from one project to another, listening to the call of the land and allowing it to intuit sustainable shelters for various ecological communities and educating them about the same. All free time was devoted to art, lines trying to mimic the ethos of the doors I came across. It was at this time I realized I was subconsciously adding tiny human-like characters in my sketches, doing intriguing things. I called them the little yellow men. These figures added a luminous quality to the art and evoked a childlike sense of wonder in those who encountered it. On my return to India, I chose to go back to the system, teaching in a formal education sector. I integrated what I had learned on my travels, play, intuition, and hands-on learning to be the core of my educating methodology. We traveled as a group to locations where masters offered their wisdom 
and experience hands-on natural building under their guidance. I persisted in my travels, seizing opportunities whenever possible. And the little yellow men accompanied me everywhere I went. Bio-architecture allowed me to manifest reality by questioning it, and art was helping me to bend reality into surreality. My artist's mind surged, pushing my hands into a new realm, the world of asymic art. Your words lose meaning, giving way to expressive strokes. Each pattern is unique, prompting a feeling of active mindfulness. I began to train my left hand with asymic art to preserve its innocence while tapping into its full potential. My art had grown its own mind. It had so many intricate layers intertwined with optical illusions, it started to drift the viewers into a space I call Sochalaya. Physically here, but mentally somewhere else. It invited them into the other half of the brain, where they had to use shape association in order to decode and plug into the flow. Integrating art, architecture and nature work, Art of Unconditioning was born, enabling participants to balance their mind field. People started approaching me, assuming I'm an art therapist. I took it as a sign and enrolled to study intermodal expressive art therapy and integrated it into my daily practice. Through expressive arts, I learned to engage in multiple art forms simultaneously, witnessing their interplay in the creative process. This, is, this not only provided therapeutic relief, but also expanded my playfulness while integrating my whole body. My biggest realization emerged here. Therapy is inherent in the creative process, making each artistic pursuit a healing process. Art and architecture gave me the strength to maneuver through difficulties by creating space around and inside me where I could access my true authentic self. As humans, we can judge art, but art cannot judge itself. I believe I am the art. I believe you are the art. Thank you. Wow.